Yo, what's good? This is your boy Lawrence, and I'm here with. Yo, what's good? This is your boy Lawrence, and I'm here with Chris and Luke, co host of Sup FM. Yeah, buddy. Every week we talk about streetwear, different things that are driving the culture, different things that are driving the hype. We're going to go over all the new sneaker releases, what's behind the design. Yep. We unpack stories from those sneakers. We'll talk to some of the best designers, and you'll probably get a rant from me about the old days of the sneaker culture. <laughs> yep. Listen, if there's stuff to talk about, we're going to talk about it. We are Sup FM. What it do, what it do, what's good with the crew? It's your boy, Lawrence Loach. We are back with another episode of Sup FM. Oh, man, I'm Lawrence Loach, LZD325. I'm on social media. Yo, you follow me. You can follow my guys, Luke Trovisi. What's up, Luke? What's up, everybody? You can find me at Trovisus, T-R-O-V-E-E-Z-U-S. I'm doing good this week, Lawrence. I'm doing good this week. I'm so happy that you're doing well. Uh, and then we got my main man, Chris Cheney, on the ones and twos. What's up, Chris? What up? At not that Cheney on all socials. And I'm great to I'm, I'm great. I'm happy to see you guys, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's really good to see you guys. And for the listeners, it's really good to hear your voices. Follow us on the discord. Yo, mm-hmm. write a positive review on whatever platform you subscribe on. Yep. And and I know a lot of you guys are vaccined up. So, yo, we got some great news for you. Uh, June 29th. Yes. We are back. Uh, sold out Tuesdays. A lot of you guys used to come out to sold out Tuesdays. It's a comedy show that we were doing pre-pandemic. Chris, where can they go to sold out Tuesday? Same spot. Same spot, baby. And it's actually the new. It's a new skin. So. During the pandemic, uh, the Village Lantern, which was our uh, hub for Sold Out Tuesdays, man, they did a facelift with that PPP money. Um, they are now the Bronx River Yacht Club. Mm-hmm. And you can go to the comedy shop. I believe that's the new term um, or the new name for the spot. But, yeah, so Sold Out Tuesday is going to be the comedy shop. I believe tentative it's 730 right now. But, you know, we'll be promoting leading up to that. So you'll have all the information uh, when you need to know. I'm ready to bomb in front of people. Oh, man. dude, I am so ready to bomb. I've only done one set since last March. Oh, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. One. I, I did a rooftop for uh, Comedy Fight Club, and it, it was great. It was fun. You know, I remembered all my jokes. I didn't have any missteps and had a good set. But, man, I just – being on McDougal uh, the other night, I went to go pop in to make sure, like, you know, we still had our slot. And, like, this shit is cracking down there, bro. People are ready, and they're ready for comedy. Yeah, man. I mean, damn, Chris, you shouldn't tell the listeners you you ready to bomb. I mean, I was bullshitting. I know I'm gonna do well. But I, mean, I just be trying to make people feel good, like yo. But now, nah, all jokes aside, yo, come come through. Uh, as stand up comics, we we fucking we've been out of work for a year. Feels really wonderful to be back indoors telling jokes. I mean, I got my my shot. I think my other guys, we got our shots. You get your shots. Come through. Whether it's outdoors, indoors, on a boat, you know, on a subway. I mean, we telling jokes, y'all. And it's it's mm-hmm. we're gonna wear some nice stuff because I get I get some of the listeners, they always like, yo, yo, what are you wearing? And I'm like, yo, just you know, I tell them, but I'm like, when I get back on stage and you know, and it's nice, we gonna we got some new heat too to to oh, yeah. So yes. it's been, a, it's oh, been yeah. a really good week, yo. Luke, you got some stuff. Talk about what you got, man. It's in the it's in the building. I got some stuff, bro. That okay. that the old Ames D. Lior source okay. uh, finally came through. Very uh-huh. excited about that. Boom. Gotta say the packaging on this is garbage. This box is really, really well. No, like the design on the box is cool, right? It's kind of got this like yellow and green to it, kind of very reminiscent of like the re. Like menthol-y colors. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, a little bit, sure. Little bit, little bit. You see where I'm making that connection to? Uh-huh. Um, you you seeing where I'm putting the pieces together? And then the shoe <laughs> itself is like really nice. The, like the quality of the leather is nice. Um, the color is really nice. I was surprised by the different laces that came through, but I was very, very happy with this purchase. Oh shit, it's all falling apart. Very happy with this purchase. <laughs> <laughs> um, qu- quick, want to shout out to the New Balance Discord, the the Circle of Trust. Word. They love that shoe. They love that shoe. They freaked out. Oh yeah, 
I mean, it was it was a well executed shoe, man. Yeah, you know it was. I mean? So, and and the rollouts are always uh, well well thought out. You know, very thoughtful in regards to previous customers, current customers. You don't leave there feeling like fuck, man. Like I got jerked, and I I think that was uh it was really well done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't necessarily want to give Ame too much flowers, but they have been doing everything very correctly at a, at a slow and steady pace. Like it's hard to argue with like what they've done with that brand. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Chris, you yeah. got some new shit in, too. I did. I did. Um, I guess this was technically a rage cop. Nice. I mean, we're going to get into it later, but um, I was feeling down because I had some of my um, my old work sort of like stolen and I was trying to make myself feel a little better. Um, so I was looking for those classic Avia basketball sneakers that like Virgil and like a bunch of other people have been referencing for their there's new sneakers. Um, I couldn't find anything that was like to the T of like what those references were. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to find some Avias that I fuck with. Whereas uh, on Merca Mercari, is that the, how you pronounce that one? Yeah, I believe so. I'm a Poshmark guy, so I don't know the other one. Um, but I, I just Google searching. I found like this one page that I, the guy had like a bunch of old he Avia heat. The shit was 40 bucks. It looked fire based on the one photo he had of it. So I was like, yo, I'm a cop these. Um, these are not what I thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> yo, they are, these are some fucking dad shoes. Like, sincerely, this shit is... I, I don't know where and when I'm going to be able to wear these. Bro, these are wave runners. You got OG wave runners. Yeah, I mean, like, this is this is the crazy thing about these, though, too. Is like, I can clearly see that these were a reference for a bunch of other shit. I mean, like, these kind of look like a Reebok, but whatever. I mean, there's, like, a certain type of shoe that has this feel to it. But, like, right. this was a, on a mood board somewhere. But it's also not going to be on my feet, though. Like, I don't know when the fuck I'm going to wear these. But, like, whatever. I guess they're Avia... Uh, seven elevens or seven, yes. Oh, seven seven ones. I don't know, man. These are both pretty dad shoes. Seven eleven. Let's see. No, the, the seven seven ones. Not the, yeah, yeah, the Avia like, seven elevens. Seven elevens. Yeah. <laughs> if they were seven elevens, they'd be hype though. <laughs> but yeah, right. these are these are fine. But we save we save the best for last. <laughs> are, they the, are they the best? Are they the best? Are are they the best? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I I think we were discussing if they were the best already. I mean, we, we definitely had some conversations about them being the best. Uh, the shoe of uh, 2021, and and like I should have done a better job at fucking having them on, having them ready to go. <laughs> uh, it's okay, man. But since you guys already pulled out your joints, I'm like, I'll just pull out mine because I wasn't gonna pull out anything. But you know, I figured. They're such a wonderful sneaker, and uh, yeah, they're they're like fucking they're amazing, man. <laughs> to me, um, I don't know. Are they shoe of the year? So well, so far, they're yeah. they're going to be in conversation. I mean, like the unions are obviously going to be in the conversation at the end of the year. These are going to be there. Like, I mean, I mean, we're getting my mananas. I think we're getting a, t a top ten with them in them. I don't know if the unions are going to be shoe of the year, man. I think you know. I think these. These are definitely uh, well regarded, well executed. Uh, the rollout was amazing. People got them. Prices are dropping too, which is a wonderful thing, especially if you want to go for the double up or the triple up, like some, you know, people do because they feel like they want to have a shoe forever. Yep. Some people, not not anybody here. Not anyone here. <laughs> I, I can I can. I can say in my heart that I've only doubled up a couple times on a shoe, never tripled up. But um, yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited. I need to actually for the listeners. I have a 13. I need to get a 12. I'm probably gonna possibly just purchase a 12 resale and then just let the price on these go up, and um, and then sell the 13s. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'll somehow end up with my 12 eventually. Just yep. like Chris has done. You know, we've all <laughs> done it. We've all mm -hmm. figured out how to get a pair of sneakers nine our size and then get the size we need. But uh, as soon as I get them, they're going straight to feet. I don't care. I, I, if I can get them by Sold Out Tuesdays, I'll wear them to Sold Out Tuesdays. Man. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So, um, can I admit something? Um, you know, you talked about how you've never tripled up. Um, mm -hmm. I have quadrupled up on one pair of shoes. How did Jesus you? Christ. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, I think I might have mentioned it before on another episode, but the D Brown um, Pump Omni Light, um, which I... They re came out with the actual shoe that he wore, the Pump Omni twos, but I let him go because I have four pairs of the Pump Omni lights. Oh yeah, you do. You do have 
I, I see these. I've seen these a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. I have two here and I think at least two at home and then like more of other colorways. But that one specifically, the D Brown. Um, yeah, those ones, those joints. I have four of those. Yeah. Oh, wow. And see, they're all beat are... now. Burnt, bro. Yeah. They are dogged. I wore them shits to the ground. Mm hmm. I never understood how you could have four pairs of, of the same shoe. I mean, maybe, you know, well, I'll say this. All right. I will say this. I've had, I've had two pairs of black and cement 2001 threes. Mm-hmm. And then I purchased two pairs of the 2018 model. So, I, I mean, I had four over the span of, you know, 20 years, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, there's, when I say triple up, I mean, people just, you know, at point yeah. of release, like, I got to have three pairs of these same sneakers. And I'm like, I can't do that shit. You, we have too many sneakers a, a, I in know. general. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you got to quadruple up, like double up. Yeah. If you want to beat one to the ground, but, you know, people are going to be people, man. Well, the, you know, the, the thing with, you know, other brands other than Nike and maybe Adidas, but like Reebok ain't, they don't really like hold shit that much. You know what I mean? Like that's a model that although pumps don't have like the drive that they used to, like they were retroing those pretty frequently. So I was like copping. I don't see, but this is the thing. I don't know the years. Like we all know the years of Nikes because it's so prominent when some of these models come out, but like D Browns, no one gave a shit about those. So like every release I was able to get them no line, no issue. Like people are like, they still make those when I'm like wearing them out. So like, but every time they retroed them, I just bought a pair. Like there was a pair that I had that I um they retroed them again. I hadn't worn the other pair. Yeah. Yo, I can never tell you the the, the retro dates of a non-Nike model. <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> like, like if someone was like, yo, I got the the 2013 retro Dikembe Mutumbos, I'd be like, I right, I guess it was that <laughs> yeah. year. Like, I don't know. Oh, like it's not, I don't know. I don't give up. Like, you know what I mean? So I know yeah. what you're saying. Like, yeah, yeah, I got the New Balance um, 997s from 2003. Like, no, no one's doing none yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. I do, but, I do like that you go to a sneaker store, and this is just how you have, like, you quadrupled up on this pair. You're just like, all right, time to get new pair of shoes, and oh, look, we've got some Jordans and some Nikes, and oh, T-Burn Omni Lights. It just fits yeah, every like, time. <laughs> I, I remember one time I was trying to uh, talk to this girl, and she had on some, some Jordans. And I was like, oh, wow, is this the, the 2015 model or the 2012? I, like, I said some dumb Why? shit like that. She was just looking at me like, I don't know what year you fucking psychopath. Like, just just fucking enjoy hopefully trying to have sex with me. It was weird, man. It was fucking <laughs> yeah. weird. I don't, I don't play that. I, like, I know the, the years and the retros and all that of Jordans and Nikes because I think that's just how it, Nike's marketing. That's genius marketing that we can we can specifically call – and look at a sneaker and be like, oh, that's the 1994 Jordan 1 Chicago model. They're, oh, that's the 2015. It's so marketing yeah. genius. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the other thing is, is that we're so nerdy, not out, like not outright because it's sneakers and that's like cool. It's not like, you know, like the anime shit that like me and Luke will talk about. It's sneakers. So it's like anime seemingly like some cool ass shit, you know? So it's like, I love the flex though when they try, where it's just like, yo, is that the 2015? Because like it's that's like a conversation letting us know that they know what's up, but like it is funny when it backfires. Oh yeah, yeah. Some guy was like, "Ooh, those are the shadows," and it's like, "Those aren't the shadows, man. What are you? Why are you trying?" Yes, (laughs) we've had that happen a couple times. I've definitely been outside of a comedy club, just been like, "Ooh, uh, those are Air Max two, light twos, aren't those?" And then they go, "No, they're Nikes. I don't, I don't, you know." Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, they don't know shit about dick. No. What else we got to talk about? What else is going on this week, guys? Um, you know, since we're kind of talking about, like, you know, how Nike releases stuff, maybe let's just go right into the Fly Ease debacle. Oh, what? yeah. What's going on? Talk, talk, Chris. Well, um, you know, we covered uh, the initial uh, announcement of that shoe where it was mm-hmm. clear that Nike was m- making these for people who have uh, a, or who are disabled. Mm. who either they can't function correctly in some way or whatever, but these were clearly designed for people who needed to take their shoes on and off without their feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, their hands, excuse me. Um, but what, what disabled people, I guess, for the most part, didn't realize is that there's this thing called the sneakers app. <laughs> and there's all these people that at Thursday, 10 a.m. are fucking clicking every button on that. So now the resale on these, which is an honest 
attempt at Nike, uh, Nike's honest attempt at helping people mm -hmm. became a resale nightmare for people who just wanted a helpful sneaker. Disabled people aren't going to want to pay $400 for those. You know what I mean? So like Twitter, uh, my algorithms that I was seeing, like uh, there was a lot of people mad about him. And I kind of have to look at Nike and going like, I know your intent was well, but you should have had intended well with the purchasing of these. Like you haven't been doing with us for the sneakers that we want, but you didn't even consider that. Like, how did you not realize that? Yeah, well, I'll say this. I mean, I don't blame the resellers. I don't blame them. I blame the, the, the Nike. You know, you have a shoe that's intended for, you know, you know, disabled people, you know, all, you know, people to get in and out of a shoe. Yeah. And then Nike markets it in a way that then it becomes, oh, my God, I must have, I need. And then the resellers are just doing what resellers should. Yeah, I, I can agree with you. I mean, mm -hmm. it is morally a little like kind of like to the not as bad as the Kobe shit where like that shit skyrocketed immediately after his unfortunate passing. But it is sort of like more like where is your moral compass on this? Um, Like that you could have took. I mean, it's not to the same extent as Kobe, but what I'm saying is like you knew this wasn't really for you. You could have let this one go. Dude, if people were selling a dead basketball player sneakers at, you know, five times the markup, I mean, Motherfuckers, I mean, what's a disabled person, you know, in need for these resellers? These resellers don't have any morals. Like, when have, when have we, the, the resellers, like, really relied on the moral police? Like, it's true. Yeah, I know. I know. Sell, I mean, they sell I, door bockers. They sell door bockers. Door I, yeah, time. I was actually yeah. about to say, like, that's another egregious, but also, like, I you fully understand. I mean, this yeah. is just another missed opportunity for Nike to have a new VP. Uh, maybe somebody that we know <laughs> that would be yes. able to handle a situation like this, you know? Yes. Yes. I'm just saying. So you Luke, know. you know, um, just to help your campaign here, your, yeah. your, uh, what would you do? Well, here's what I would do. I would, uh, have everybody come in to the, we have to come into the store. You have to come into the store and you have to show me that you can't tie your shoes. And then there, <laughs> that's, Gonna solve the problem. Oh yeah, that's really that's gonna do it. That's really gonna solve the problem. Cause here's the thing: you gotta uh, listen. Our our producer saying maybe they should prove their disability, which is a little bit of a slippery slope, right? <laughs> it's a little bit of a slippery slope. But here at Nike, we want to make sure that we want to make sure everybody feels included, right? We just yeah. gotta have you. If you're a reseller and you're gonna resell these shoes, you have to lie to somebody's face that you have a disability. That's all I'm saying. You know. So you telling me you telling me they should uh, kind of like how the certain skateboard shops or certain shops. Make you prove your size and walk out of the store with them. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. So you're uh -huh. saying that? Okay. 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 I hear what you're saying, and that might be a PR nightmare. Um, <laughs> that might be a PR nightmare. So what you're saying is someone has to walk in, prove their disability, and walk out with yeah. the shoes on their feet. Well, you know, that's this is just like the this is not really the <laughs> this is just the, the blueprint right now this is not right. in front of the board yet he, he's like, uh it's his I, pitch it's his pitch right now i feel like what i would do is i would try to get this plan implemented hold it as host as a hostage situation and say hey nike i'm gonna do this unless you make more pairs of these so you're saying you want to hold uh disabled people hostage no 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 i want to i want to <laughs> i want to hold a corporation hostage <laughs> oh okay okay to make more flyies i think that would <laughs> that would do it they'd be like this is the only way we're doing this or we could just make more what's what's your decision guys what's your decision mm-hmm Okay, I'm with that. Okay, all right. I support you in figuring this out. Holy shit, I just saved myself there. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my. Man. Have you guys ever seen a guy, like, get out of quicksand? Oh, yeah, I just did. You just we watched. Were, we were ready to cancel you, man, especially, know. you know. You, you really were. I want to thank my board of directors, Lawrence and Chris. <laughs> Meanie, you know, you got to prove your disability <laughs> thing. I leaned on you for that. Prove your disability <laughs> prove your disability uh, oh that shit is that shit is so funny <laughs> yeah but it is it is a shame it is a shame that these people aren't able to get their shoes but i'm i'm 100 percent sure that we're going to get more pairs in the future oh that's I mean, Nike's I rollout I no that's nike's rollout tactics man come on it's make the shit super limited and then and then eventually um you know make them less limited and then have people you know flood the market well, yeah. this is a, a new technology, so I do feel like it will be accessible across the board as they apply this to a bunch of other current models. Um, you know, it, they better it, like, do it fast, though. They better do it fast. Yeah, though. but I could see like 
just off the top of my head, like they doing this to like all the Pegasus shit, like sort of like the runner models, you know what I mean? Like the more comfort, like, you know, we had the argument they would do it to a three. And then like, I don't know, I don't remember how exactly that ended, but we, you were like, no, Lawrence, you're like, never, don't do that. Nah, they ain't gonna do it to a three. They need better no. technology to do it to a three, bro. Yeah. Like they, you know what I mean? I mean, I know, I know Jordans have, you know, taken some of the tech, newer technology uh, like the adapt stuff and like you know yeah. things like that, but I, I don't think they would do. Hopefully not. I would hope not. But so you're saying we would need a futuristic Nike shoe, basically, to like get that kind of technology of like the on the Jordan Three. Well, yeah. well, okay. Wait, hear me out though, because I mean, I, maybe I, if you just look at how this is constructed, it mm -hmm. really is just they put a split in the sole, and then they have that band around it. I mean, if they can figure out how to do that to every soul, I don't know, see why they wouldn't at least kind of take a couple of swings. Oh, on a Jordan one, they would have a strap on, on the soul side. I don't know, man. Mm. I don't know. Jeff Staples seems to have an idea about what Nike should be doing. I don't know if you guys saw that. Oh, his NFTs? Yeah, he did like a... Lawrence, did you see the NFTs that he did? No, show. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He's um so he did so Jeff Staples of Staples uh Staples brand, uh you know, made this uh Staples pigeon dunk kind of inspired by some Nike stuff and Jesus uh Christ. Yeah, man. Uh he's in the uh he's in the NFT space now. Jeff Staple promoting the fucking everything pigeon reminds me of Al Bundy reminding everyone he scored four touchdowns. <laughs> it's like, do you have anything else besides fucking pigeon stuff Nothing um else. actually i didn't even uh i forgot that i did this i actually was in his office uh fairly recently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i he's got all his collabs hanging up or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean basically um someone i know at the pigeon office um was like yo let's go get a drink after work one day and i was like all right so then i, I met him at the pigeon office and he came up and he's like oh have you seen the office yet and i was like nah so no one was really there because of covid and it was like after work or whatever but i looked around saw everything it's a nice space and the, his office just has every pigeon thing he ever did in there and it's a lot you are right mm -hmm. there is a lot of pigeon shit but i mean he's the pigeon guy so like i can't blame him that's his brand it's pigeon shit all over the floor yeah, there's pigeon shit every yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I didn't even mean to say it like that, but yeah, pigeon shit's everywhere. <laughs> I think it would be hilarious if like if Jeff Staples was kind of like Batman, where like his origin story is like uh, like he was like we had to face his fears and a pigeon fucking flew into his face and he's like, I'll be mm -hmm. the pigeon guy. <laughs> yeah. That's that's <laughs> I mean, like, how do we feel about this shoe? Or, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't even call it a shoe. How do we feel about this piece of art? <laughs> um, you know, I get worried about the sneaker NFT space. Uh, I've mentioned it in the like we've we've discussed this in the past about like, you know, the da like people being able to download sneakers for their, like their avatars in different games and stuff yep. and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. And like the kind of slippery slope of, you know, they, this is just going to be another platform that they can farm resales for mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah, I mean, the NFT space is getting very interesting. Uh, the understanding is not um, like no one really knows what the fuck these things are or how to do them, but everyone's like figuring out their own way to put them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I guarantee if you ask Jeff Staple what the NFT is and how does it work, I don't know if he's going to have the correct explanation for it. He'll be like, how does the NFT work, Mr. Staple? He's like, well, my pigeons told me. He's like, come <laughs> on, man. Like, nah, everything's not a fucking pigeon, Staple. Grow up. Fuck so from me. what I understand, it's a place to buy art, but the pigeons told me. That's what I'm saying, man. Get out of here. Get out. But I mean, I get it. He like That's his claim to fame. He's going to die on a pigeon hill in a pigeon coop. You know what I mean? Well, this is the thing a lot of people don't realize, like they didn't he didn't choose to be the pigeon guy. I know he named his brand pigeon or whatever, but he didn't want to be the pigeon guy the same way that like Keith Huffenagel didn't want to be the weed socks guy. You know what or I mean? Like, like you, or like Nicky Diamonds didn't want to yeah, be the diamond guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you sort of like end up leaning into it because that's how your brand is like going to end up being marketed. And like if you want to be a personality, you sort of have to succumb to this. But like Bobby Hundreds doesn't want to be known as the bomb guy you know what i mean but it is what it is here's Solid the thing go ahead, go ahead, oh, here's the thing though uh no you're right no actually you're right because i was gonna make a dumb point about i'll, I'll tell you what i'm gonna i was gonna say and you're gonna tell me i was i was crazy okay. uh it's just like 
the fact that he leaned into it more and more is kind of what got him to this point where he's like, he doesn't, he says he doesn't want to be, but like more of his actions show us that he kind of wants to be the the pigeon guy. Pigeon guy. Well, all right. I mean, and just to say this to kind of dismount off the conversation at the end of the day, he's become a legend in the space and he's, he kind of has to take that and hold that. And he's taken like on an educational role for the most part. Like he's more of a personality now. And like when you're a personality, um, you have to lean into what that personality is. It's a pigeon. So yeah, that, that's like me being the fucking kombucha guy. Like, do I want to be known as the guy who exactly fucking, it's like, but then sometimes you just lean into it, you know what I mean? And then somehow every comedy show you end up talking about kombucha and everyone knows you as the kombucha guy. Yeah. This is what his office looks like, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I get it. So I understand it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what I would be, I guess, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's scary to think about. Like, what are people calling me outside of Chris? <laughs> L- loud, obnoxious, uh, the guy with punch, the laugh, punchable, punchable face, <laughs> uh, douchebag, uh, asshole, uh-huh. uh, dork, dweeb, <laughs> loser, uh-huh. um, uh, cock face. I've heard that one. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. I remember that one one time. Yeah. yeah so one. Uh, you guys are just lying out your ass, but that's fine. All right. So there you okay. go. <laughs> oh, oh, that was on great. A, on a sad note, guys, the uh, the owner of uh, fans uh, passed away. The founder. Owner. Did I just fuck that up? No, no, no. He was one of the co-founders. He unfortunately um, passed away. I mean. 2021 is also a year guys like I, we've lost a lot of important people this year um and you know not a lot of people even knew who this guy was but it is uh just to pay respect to the guy who made a wave that people are still riding you know yeah he made a thing and every emo skater kid from the you know early 2000s owes him thank yous well yeah we want to rest and say rest in peace to Paul yep. Van Doren uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Vans, uh, they paid tribute to him on, on their uh, Instagram and, and one of his quotes, you know, one of the things he said was do what's right, stand behind every, stand behind what you do every single minute of every day, uh, take care of people. So, um, you know, I, I can't, I can't express how, um, how important Vans are to our, our culture and, you know, from, from little teenage white girls to the hoodest of hood dudes yep. uh, ha- have owned a pair of Vans from, you know, little Wayne to, you know, whoever. And I, and I think that's very, um, that goes to show you how, how important Vans are. Like, you know, they're like Chuck Taylors and, you know, and Air Force Ones, like sn- sneakers that are just, you know, people, they generations, yeah, they tra- cultures and yeah, generations too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so funny that like you know we never really had a real Vans conversation on this podcast, and maybe like in passing because of one uh, collaborative effort between Vans and someone else. But like, yeah, what you're saying is very true. Yeah, like Vans are one of the most universal sneakers that have ever been created, and and mm-hmm. you know it's funny just going off that conversation about like having your livelihood attached to your product. Like, this is named after that guy, but no one knew who he was. But everyone knows who like Nikki Diamonds is. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. just very interesting to think about um but yeah rest in peace man i mean half cabs uh slip-ons uh any all, all those shoes man like you know usually you're lucky enough if you're a sneaker company you get one banger like converse and the chucks but i mean vans have like six mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. definitely some iconic silhouettes from the vans family yeah, yeah absolutely totally. um speaking of iconic um silhouettes too uh you know, we sort of predicted that this would happen with the Nike Sakai model. Um, it's coming, baby. <laughs> there, it's it, the triple labels are coming, man. We got Nike Sakai uh, undercover and clot. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, where they just dressed them up in their brand colors, which that seems like it's going to be the formula. I mean, how do we feel about these guys? Do we give a shit or not? Nah? I mean, I'm kind of on the side of who gives a fuck. But then again, I never really was on this shoe like that in the first place. I like the undercover, uh, the waffles that they were doing before for themselves. They were doing like mm-hmm. a undercover and mm-hmm. Nike collab. Mm-hmm. I really like those. So I'm kind of happy to see both of those models kind of intermingling because they, they like I always thought that like 
I like the undercover ones because they were kind of the like discount version of the Sakai's. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do appreciate these two collabing and the idea of it being like the fourth iteration or like, I don't know, what are we at? Seventh inter- iteration of the, the Sakai mm-hmm. model. I mean, it, who knows? it makes sense for it to be kind of like a little bit. It's it almost view, it's viewable as almost more attainable at this point. Right. You know, you'll definitely it feels like you'll have more of a shot at one of these two that are coming out the clots or the or the undercovers. Yeah, I mean, and it is cool that, you know, Sakai and Nike are sharing the model with these other brands because like, uh, you know, Sakai could have been like, all right, I'll, we'll just do the clock colorway. It's like close enough or like an undercover looking colorway. But now that triple label, kind of like I said before, like discussions we have, it's driving up the hype again, adding those layers of people involved in like, you know, mm-hmm. postable content type of shit for blogs like Hype Beast or whatever. But like, you know, it's driving the hype up. What year do you think we reached the 12 team collaboration? Like a oh, full basketball team worth of people. The posse cut, the yeah. posse cut of a collab. Like an all-star weekend of design, you know? I mean, bro, do you know how I used to just, this used to be what I would just get high and imagine like when I was in high school, like what, like the best sneaker collaboration. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The idea of like having every member of Dipset, <laughs> have yeah, a, exactly. you know what I mean? Like a Dipset anthem shoe. Exactly. Everybody uh, has like a fucking say in the sneaker and then what comes out of it. I have no clue. I think the year, I'm, I'm predicting, well, you know, it all depends on when I hit when I hit VP, you know, <laughs> when I take Anne's, Anne's position, that's that's when that happens. I mean, the real answer mm-hmm. uh, just off top, because I did not think about this beforehand, but you get Fujiwara, you yeah. get Yamamoto. You basically get like you get. The, I mean, we had the top five conversation before. You just get their imprints mm-hmm. on something simple like an Air Force One or a Jordan One or whatever, whatever knockout silhouette you want to pick. And then that's it. Just everybody gets a panel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It could it could be something like that. I'm not mad at that. Olympic mm-hmm. level design, different like, teams from different countries. Ridiculous. <laughs> I just now I'm just thinking about what the sneaker Olympics would look like. Yeah, it'd be dumb. It'd be dumb. we can't do that. <laughs> sneaker, I don't even know what that would be. What I'm gonna probably get. I and think about that later too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be ridiculous. We couldn't do that. Yeah, man. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous? The price of these Doge coins, baby. Elon Musk, baby, to the mother effing moon. Yeah, Elon Musk. He's uh, coming on SNL this weekend. Yeah. Uh, there's in anticipation. Dogecoin is rising in value. You guys, you better be careful because before you know it, this podcast is going to be sponsored by Trevisas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get why people are mad about him. <clears throat> I don't know why why the other SNL hosts uh, are um co-stars are mad about him i i understand why you know the overall community is kind of mad at him it's it's well, I, I i why though i don't get it it's a billionaire it's a, it's a people billionaire just thing. hate billionaires like they they like play this love hate relationship like there's half of the population that's like oh billionaire that's where you want to be so mm. I, I i'm gonna like ah uh, you know, pray to I'm the not, altar of money and then I, i'm not buying because he's a billionaire you don't think it's because he's a billionaire dude no, I people think people hate Bezos because he's a billionaire. I think white people hate billionaires. Okay. And specifically other white people hating white billionaires because there's plenty of billionaires that we all love. Mm-hmm. And it's they're, the only thing that I can see is that they're not white. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. People just don't like billionaires. It's not, I don't think it's just a white thing. It's there's people all like, cause there's just people who don't have that much. And then they see this guy who gets to go on SNL because he's got okay. money. Okay. I'll concede a little, like a lot of people don't like Kanye. Yeah. But there, there aren't many like, what do you mean? Dr. Dre got flamed for having a, a new pair of Air Force Ones every day. Yeah. Like but it's do- billionaire shit. But people don't hate Dr. Dre for being a billionaire. Some people do. I don't think for I, I don't think I think like you look at Michael Jordan he's I mean he's a billionaire and, and no yeah, one really Michael Jordan <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying no nah, you know I get what I mean I understand what you're saying I think people don't like billionaires because we look at you know it's always the well if they just you know put some of their money together they can end world hunger and all yeah it's probably something like that 
it's you sure. know no no person should have all that wealth and you know bezos and Bezos is the best example of it because he he is like the you know a Lex Luthor villain type because his all of his employees get treated like shit and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's Musk. I think like people, some of the SNL hosts are wary of what he's doing with cryptocurrency. Kind mm-hmm. of he could be inflating it. Everybody's a little cautious of that. Also, you have like more of a left leaning SNL than usual, so obviously they're going to be more of that kind of camp, Lawrence. Right? Yeah, of course, of course. That's what it seems like. I mean, but you know, as a as a here's my thing, and I'm always going to say this. I think as a if you're on a television show, I understand you always are going to have your choice to whether you want to or not. But I mean, what I mean, working with Bezos, I mean, uh, with uh, Musk, you know, would you guys work with them? Yeah, yeah of you, course, absolutely, immediately. That's what, I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. It's like you know, it's always the I'm so woke and like oh we gotta you know fuck you know, and I know he's done he said some dumb shit. You know, he's done some dumb shit. He's also you know, if you're a, uh, a shareholder at Tesla, you know, some of the things he's done in the past has been head scratching in terms of his social media. But oh, dude, he I realized I actually liked him when he changed his Twitter avatar to um, yeah. Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. It's an anime, Lawrence, because that's yeah. just some weeb shit to do. My, my is, man just did it. Mine is the Rogan, the Rogan moment where he smoked the weed. That's my oh, favorite moment. That's a great where moment, too. Where he tries it and he's like, oh, that's interesting. Like, <laughs> fucking. Um, to be uh, uh, on some hater shit, he did not inhale. No, he didn't ha- inhale. But that was the point. That was like, he just kind of did it. <laughs> Stupid. Yo, that shit was great, man. And then, like, when he tweets with uh, misspellings on purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's what a, a guy. What are we going to are we going to look back? Are we going to look back? On in, in five years and be like, damn, yo, uh, President Musk was on SNL, just like, <laughs> just like uh, Donald Trump. No, I think uh, I think we're gonna hold uh, the celebrity <laughs> presidents for a while. I think we're gonna have some normal yeah, shit, bro. I don't know about that. <laughs> I really don't know about. I that. hope not. I like. I don't know. I'm I'm mm-hmm. cool on anybody who like had a like a television career before <laughs> running for president. <laughs> Me, meaning just put a, he just said uh or the rock or kanye or megan markle or or caitlin jenner everyone is gonna fuck you know all the celebrities who do snl are they gonna fucking be president in a couple maybe of years? maybe caitlin's caitlin jenner's running for like governor or some shit like that right about yeah like, but then then she said Cali? some dumb shit about uh homeless people which i didn't read about or see but mm-hmm. i just saw a bunch of people were mad at her mm-hmm. yeah, Cal- mm-hmm. yeah california yeah, yeah yeah uh the state of la i just yep. you know, I <laughs> But no, I think that's. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll tune in if I'm awake to see Elon. And, I'm gonna um, be tuning into my Dogecoin. That's really all I'm. I mean, you you better. I mean, I don't know who I don't know what you what what you sell it through. But I mean, as we've seen with Robinhood, they will lock that shit for people to sell. So I know. Mm-hmm. I'm not using Robinhood. I'll, I'll use the uh, Weeble. That's the like Weeble. the Chinese based mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Uh, um. Uh, I don't know, boys. No, can we can we talk about my my little uh, excursion I had with this one blog? Oh, that's right. You had yeah. a, you had a you have beef. I do. I did have beef. I mean, we resolved it. Um, I was talking about in the Discord a little bit as it was happening. Um, but by the way, again, join the Discord because that that shit's fun and shit. When shit like this happens, you know, you would we'll be uh-huh. discussing and having back and forth uh-huh. banter about it. Um, mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> I, people don't even know where this originated because the blog doesn't even exist anymore. But similar to what Hype Beast and High Snobiety, Nice Kicks, these sort of fashion sneaker blogs provide, I used to work for Slam Hype, which I guess technically was the original blog. It started in 2003 by this guy named Adam Bryce. Um, I mean, I when I got on it, it was not what it used to be. Hype Beast and High Snobiety and some of these other bigger names had sort of taken over the space. But... I guess I was technically a content creator at the time. And one of the things I created for the magazine, the blog, whatever, was I broke down every major streetwear brand uh, and what their font was and how they used it. Nerd. Uh, so this meanie pulled up the article that was um, replicating mine. Um, so you can see basically what they did was there's the worst version of mine mm-hmm. where... Th- Meanie, scroll back up for a second. <clears throat> you guys can clearly see that's not the right font, right? So you have the Supreme logo on the left. Mm-hmm. And then look at that font in the middle. That is not the same font. 
Mm hmm. So not only did they jack my shit, my idea, which I don't own any people have done this all the time. You can go on um, what what the what the font you could put in your fucking shit, like whatever, like whatever picture you wanted the shit. And it will tell you I, I don't own figuring out what fonts people use are. That. Huh? You can do that. That's crazy. Yeah, you can do that. There's plenty of uh, font uh, assets like that. And I, I, me, I'm not like I can't you can't own explaining this to people. Right. But yeah. what you can own. <clears throat> is how it looks and they for like verbatim took my formatting they took the brands i did they took everything about everything i did and they just fucking did it worse yeah i want to see yours though mm -hmm. I meaning you can go on my website not that cheney.com shameless plug um and then there's a, a <clears throat> there's a there's a link to it it will be like streetwear fonts at the bottom <laughs> um put one t not that cheney so this was my original that I did like uh, however long ago. I mean, I updated it since. So I did Yeezy. I did Off-White. Uh, I mean, I even had a article that I wrote on Medium that was based off the podcast episode where we had, I think, where we talked about a long time ago, L, like in 2018 or whatever. But yeah, so like the, all these all these joints. And then, you know, some of them like could be improved. Some of them like aren't as tight as I could have made them. But the whole point was just to get it out there. So people knew like knew this was me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did streetwear ones first. Then I did high end fashion. And then I did like, uh, you know, some ones that I thought like Timberland and then um, skate. But so I had a back and forth with these guys where I was like, yo, yo, rep my shit. What's good? And they came back. And they were like, um, yeah, OK, we see that uh, we did not steal it, but we can see there's a lot of similarities. Uh, how do like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want you to admit that you stole this. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing emails back and forth, by the way. Right, um, right, right. Of course. Um, I was like, yo, you clearly took my shit. I had been the only person to visually elevate this concept at this level for the past, like almost decade. The earliest thing that I've posted with a date on it says 2014, but I had this in my head, like work, like work in progress, for, like way before I even moved to New York, like 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were like, uh, okay, we're going to reformat it. Um, we're not going to not do this because it's great content. This is, this was ta tapped by nobody before I did it. Really. Mm -hmm. And my visual references were the I've been in meetings with other designers who are referencing these going like, hey, I so I found this like font breakdown. I think we could reference this. I'm like, guy, I, I have the working file. I'll send you all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, people have been referencing this work for a long time. And it's like one of the only things I have as like a viral moment for not only streetwear, but as a designer. You know what I mean? Like, it's the only it's the best thing I have for that, that Van Guy where I'm, I'm overlapping. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess, uh, to kind of conclude about it, um, they were basically like, yeah, we're going to reformat it. We're going to give you two weeks. We'll post like a new version within two weeks. So we'll take down that link. Um, what's sad though, is I hit them up. Like the only reason why I even found out about this shit is because I was going to like tighten them up. Like I said, like I knew there was some things I could change. I was going to tighten all this shit up and then start selling them as prints, maybe an mm -hmm. NFT or something like that. I just wanted to like get some, some shit out of this. Um, and when I saw them, I was like, oh, I can't sell prints when like my shit looks exactly like they're wrong shit. Like, how am I fucking supposed to do that when mm -hmm. they might get mixed up? <clears throat> I even offered to them. I was like, look, I'll redo it for you guys. Basically, I'll do it. And then we can split the print if you help me sell them. And they were like, no, nah, we'll just do it again, but worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, are you going to sue? No, I'm not going to sue. You can't sue over something like that. Are you going to punch someone in the face? They're in Canada, <clears throat> but next are time I'm in go Canada, Canada so are we going to Canada? Is there going to be a sup FM trip where we go to Canada, perform live shows and you punch these guys in the face? I would like to have a discussion with them um, at a more mm -hmm. casual level at some point soon. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole time they were kept, they kept saying like, we didn't rip you off. And it's like, no, 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 you did. I'm the only person for the like almost a decade who had this visually elevated to this way. Mm -hmm. I was the only reference and yours. It looks exactly like mine. Canada listeners, please send in to the sup podcast, NYC Gmail locations where we could perform in Canada, preferably located somewhere near this Ontario. Where, where's oh, Ontario? Maybe mm -hmm. in the Ontario area, there would be conveniently a show where Chris could go and, you know, and punch someone in the face. And then punch <laughs> in the face. 
No, I mean, I am happy that they were responsive and they took uh, partial ownership. They still refuse to admit that they took mine, but I mean, they were like, all right, we've, we fucked up here a little. We should have at least referenced you, knew about it, whatever. What else? So that's why you got to go and punch, punch him in the face. In the face. Yeah. <clears throat> there you yeah. go. That should be the title of this episode, Punch Him in the Face. Um, <laughs> guys, where can we find you at again? You can find me at Trevezus, T-R-O-V-E-E-Z-U-S. Chris, where can we find you? At not that Cheney, uh, C H E N E Y. Um, and what about you, L? LZD three two five. Yeah. You also have a podcast, Lawrence. I do. It's called I Hate This Job. And for those of you <laughs> people who hate your job, just listen to the podcast. Hell yeah. Um, again, sold out Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, tentative was July tw- uh, no June twenty ninth. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, we're. Uh, as things get nailed down, we will be uh, promoting and you'll have all the information you need. Um, we didn't get to it this week, maybe next week, but I do want to say rest in peace to the flagship a life store. Yeah. The store, the brand is not closing. We closed the store. Um, and wow, there was so much love on social media. I really forget how much impact that store had on um, people of influence in this space. There was nobody uh-huh. like Trey said in his post, there's nobody that of influence in streetwear that didn't go through that shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got you. All right, so, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, rest in peace. You want it now? You want to go over now? I don't know if you were trying. No, to get no, out I of said, here. no, no, no. We'll, no. Do, we'll do it next week. Yeah, next week because there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that happen in that backyard and in that in that store. So rest in peace. Um, and unfortunately, if you guys didn't get to run through, we're opening another one, so don't worry. Uh, and it's gonna be just as um important and a pillar. It's gonna be nice. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be sick can be tight nice uh, very nice all right. all right any final thoughts we're good uh fuck gridfeedy.com fuck yeah we're gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> peace out everybody all right, all right peace guys okay